Welcome back to the basement yard. What's going on, Danny? I'm doing good, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Dap it up, kid. Yeah, damn, dude, you pulled the shit out of me right there. Did I? I, yeah. pulled, I pulled your body? Fuck. Sorry, did I slap your hand too hard? I got little ass hands. Do you? Yeah. Tarzan me. See? Yeah. You ever go to the NBA store and you see the like the hands of the of the players? Yeah, I put my hand in, in, in Shaq's hand. I'm like, wow, this guy can like literally rip my arm off. Unbelievable! It's insane. I think he's got like a massive ween. No, I've I've actually heard that he has a small penis. You know people that have banged Shaq? No, but it's like one of it's those. Probably not small, but in comparison, when you just look at him, he's a giant human. Yes. So like an eight inch dick would look weird on him. Yes. Like unless he had a fourteen inch dick, then it would look like oh, this guy's got a small. Ween. Yeah. You know, so. We don't have that problem. <laughs> no, we're, no, we're no. normal sized people. Yes, everything normal. Yeah, <laughs> everything normal. Um. Anyway, today, like, there's no banter in the beginning. We just have a, a very hot and steamy episode here. Yeah. Um. If you listen to other people's lives, the other podcasts that I do with my buddy Greg, we usually interview people, uh, who have like some unique thing about them like or poo just, or pee pee yeah just like you know a fetish or like yeah. you learn a lot about a person you know like their deepest darkest secrets so there was this one particular episode where he found this thing where i think like the new york times put it out and it was like made by some psychologist or you know whatever the fuck um and it was like questions that lead to love mm-hmm. you know so uh we just answered all of them and it's a very deep it's fucking deep Like the way that they designed it It's like it starts off easy And then it starts getting fucking crazy Yeah they butter that butt up Yeah exactly So it starts to get you thinking about like old memories And it opens your fucking mind Damn son I'm About yeah. to cry Anyone who I've ever done this to With the exception of Greg Because we did it like together But I did it to a couple of people um, After the fact okay. Like I went through the whole thing with them Have cried Really? They have cried Yeah they have cried doing it So Dudes? Uh, yeah dude One dude about to be two dudes. About to be two dudes. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna take much for you to cry. No, just be like, uh, when's your birthday? Be like January thirty. Yeah, I don't know. It rained that day. So I have the quiz here. Uh, it is meant to be like you asking your yeah. partner or some girl you're interested in or something like that. But I just find it to be very interesting because it, it, you know you learn a lot about a person. So yeah. we're gonna learn a lot about me and Danny today. Fuck. Here we go. The when me and Greg did it at my old apartment. We just drank, we were drinking like whiskey, not like, uh, you know, excessive, like we weren't drunk or anything, but we just had whiskey and we were sitting on my couch. Do you want me to call my sponsor for you guys? Yeah, no problem. Are you okay? Is this a cry for help? Listen, help me, son. Look at me. (laughs) Look at my eyes. Help me the fuck out. So you just sat on the couch and like cried? We sat on the couch and drank whiskey like on our knees. Like, you know how like single moms sit on the couch with like their wine and they're like. Never understood it. Like watching Golden Girls or something? That can't be comfortable. It kind of is. Um, anything on that couch is comfortable. I, I like to sit like a woman. And I sleep like a woman. Yeah, you do sleep like a woman. I, that's what I'm saying. But this couch right here, I could be a fucking... I could sleep like a, an ostrich on that thing. Just bury my head in the fucking <laughs> things and go to sleep like a normal person. Yeah, it's a great couch. But yeah, I, I like to I like to sit and, and sleep like a woman. Whatever yeah. that may mean. I, I don't really know. But I like to be tucked. Like, I... I is this the first answer to one of these questions? No, no, no. Oh, I'm, just, oh. you know, I'm just confessing oh. right now. I'm just like you're getting all of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to get all. I want to get all of you today. All of me. Ooh. Loves. You know what? All of you. What? Why you? Oh, I'm you, gonna do you, something you, very you, special for you today. Are you praying hands? I'm gonna hit the golden buzzer. <laughs> I just start crying. And just, then it's like it's like cold, yo the golden buzzer moments on America's dude, got you fucking the, whatever the X Amer, America's got the X factor whatever the fuck it's called. You saw that kid Cody Lee then right? Oh yeah, like the blind, the blind autistic kid. Yeah, he's like, he was nasty. amazing. Yeah, he's nasty dude. Yeah, I cried. Yeah, golden buzzer is part of my like routine of when I'm trying to cry. I'm like, oh well, let me hit some golden buzzards. You ever go through like a YouTube like automatic all cry videos? Yeah, I try I really do. hard. I, I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. yeah, every so often, like every like three months, you're like, well, today I'm crying. Yeah. I'm going to cry this one out tonight. Yeah, but Golden Buzzers do it. And they, they do such a good job producing those moments. Love is my love. Yeah. Slow motion, like. Yeah, Howie Mandel's like, you know what? You were great. And th- I'm. 
slow then, motion. And then it's like slow motion. And you hear like fucking Coldplay. It's like lights will guide. And you're like, fuck, dude. I never accomplished my dreams in my life. I'm so happy for this person. I know. And that's kind of it. You know? That honestly doesn't like get them anything though. Like it's cool and everything. But it's just like, like it's put, just it it's a golden up. ticket to to Hollywood, like American Idol. Yeah, but I feel like if you get a golden buzzer, like someone's gonna like give you a deal or something. Maybe you know. Maybe but you're nice. You're nice with it. You're nice with it. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you're you're marketable. Oh, yeah. If you get a golden buzz, I can market that ass. Hell yeah, dude. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let's let's uh. <laughs> Let's get it going here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Susan Boyle, by the way. Haven't heard of her in a while. Yeah. She kind of lost it a little bit. She like went crazy a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think she I think she like got too ahead of herself. Yeah. It's like, listen, Susie. What is she saying? She's saying like Les Miserables. No, no, no. The time's yeah. gone by. I, I dreamed a dream. The Where time's gone by. The house to be a morning after. Yes, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, but I thought it was something like that. Susan Boyle's song. Uh, I dreamed a dream. That's what it was. I think I think that's what I said. I dreamed a dream. Yeah, I I don't know what the fuck it is, but I wish I knew what the what was the where's the part where she starts screaming? I had a dream my life would be so different from this hell. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. when she goes yeah, in, she and you're like, it. damn, yo, this old fucking like rickety bitch is nice. Yeah, because she, she looks like she just got out from sweeping the kitchen. Oh yeah, and she gets out on the stage and starts belting it out. You're like, yo, Susie. This bitch, get her she, out of the fucking. She looks like she like cleans uh, chimneys, chimneys and yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah, you know, like Susan she looks Boyle like, has a lot to offer. I feel like in terms of like the sad, stereotypical like old time housewife, bro. Yeah, who could sing her ass off? Yo, Susan Boyle. You know what Susan Boyle looks like? She looks like you ever see that picture where it's like, is this a witch or like a a mountain? Yeah, and it's like a face that's sideways. And you're like, oh shit, that is a witch, and she's got like a. That's Susan Boyle. Yeah, she she's looks, the witch in that picture. Or she'd be like the wife of like somebody who did something, like back in like the sixteen hundreds. Yeah, but she was like the talented brains behind it. Yeah, and nobody knew that she had a voice of an angel because the the male patriarchy held her down. She looks like all my grandma's friends from back in the day. Like oh yeah, all black and white pictures. Like all those bitches look like that. She looked like a grandma from the day she was born. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I mean, she probably had a rough go in the beginning of it, but it started to work out at the end there. Yeah, she's got She's got pipes. Pipes. So, Susie, we're big fans. Dream to Dream. Crushed it. Susie boys. Big uh, Susie, Susie and the boys. We're you know Susie what boys. We're Susie boys is what we are. We're, we're Boyle boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, cool. All right, hit me. All right, so let's get, let's get into this fucking, this shit. I don't know how we're going to, like, put sponsors in the middle of this, but we'll figure that whole yeah, out. Yeah, in between tears. Yeah. Yeah, once you, once you got to take a break. All right, first one, set one, very easy shit. Okay. Question one. Given the choice of anyone in the world, who would you want to have as a dinner guest? I'm assuming alive. Al- alive, right? I'm assuming. Um, Trey Parker. That's a good one. Creator of South Park and Book of Mormon. I, I would, like that. I, I would like to pick his brain yeah. on the world. I, I, I would say Jamie Foxx. Yeah, that's a great one too. Because he's this dude does it all. Yeah, I just want to know, like, what, what's how? it like to be that talented? Yeah, not even that talent, but I feel like there's talent there. But I also feel like I'm confident in that he would say something like, "Yo, you just fucking go." Like, there's there's just a thing in people's minds where it's like nothing's not that nothing's good enough, but it's like I'm just invincible. Yeah, and I'll yeah. get this shit done and I'll figure it out. Like, I just want to know the thought process behind that. Yeah, like he'll probably give me like these two lines that just stay with me forever and kind of drive me like i just want that yeah he can blueprint it out for you i want that gym from yeah, jamie yeah, fox yeah. um it's a good one cool question two would you like to be famous and in what way um really think about that n- i'm gonna be honest what level of fame do you, are we saying like can famous. you can, can you set a bar no 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 i don't believe you Here's the only reason why I don't think I could handle it. That doesn't mean you don't want to be famous. Okay, then if it's if all if there, if I'm not thinking of any variables at all, of course I would love to be famous. I think everyone wants to be famous. Yeah, of course. But like, if I'm not thinking of any variables in it, like what comes with fame, like it's I could just be famous. Uh, I would be famous. In yeah. what way? Um. Let me kind of kind of like a Jamie Fox. 
Just like a just like a jack of all trades. Like I would want to be like, yo, I got nominated for a Grammy and an Oscar. Like <laughs> fucking nice. Yeah. Like I saw like uh, Jamie Foxx has a new movie coming out with uh, Michael B. Jordan and Brie Larson. Yeah. And let's just say Michael B. Jordan's gonna have a rough go. Uh, I would think so because he's acting with Jamie Foxx, and if you see the trailer, it's like, yo, Jamie Foxx is really good. And didn't Brie Larson win? A- yeah, she's an Academy Award winner too. For what? The Room. Yeah. Room was good. Room was very good. It was weird, but it was yeah. good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would want to be like a jack of all trades. I would want to be, damn, Jamie Foxx taking over the entire show. Yeah, I just like threw that out there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, like I think that everyone wants to be famous. I think that, of course, there's repercussions with that, but I, I think it's inherent in humans to be want to be liked yeah. by people. And I think when you're famous that you, you get to notice that people like you. And it, it would it be annoying to have like, like really thinking about it like do i want to be like a super duper star that you can't go out in public and do normal things like absolutely not like i would i would like i think lose you could, it. i think you'd handle it better than i do though like i, th- I think you'd be more fiscally responsible i i think yeah but that doesn't mean that has nothing to do with fame like i look at like drake right like yeah. drake does really good with being famous i feel like he has like a really good team like okay like you would have a better team than mine <laughs> that's that's how I that's how I feel. All right, but yeah, I don't know. I think that everyone wants to be famous, but for what? I, I don't know. I honestly like I've always just wanted to be impressive to people, whatever that whatever that means. Like I enjoy being able to uh, be able to hold a conversation about anything. Yeah, and 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 just be respected in a conversation because I've been there and like been in a conversation where it's kind of like you know, oh, you're too young or you don't really know what you're talking about or like you got lucky or like whatever. Like I would just want to be like respected in any conversation so that if I did talk about something that I did know about, then people would kind of be like open to hearing what I would say right. in a way, yeah. you know? And that's what I kind of mean by impressive. Like not that I'm doing any everything for other people, yeah. but it is a part of it where you enjoy that people can be like, you know what, I, you know, whatever. And I also would like to be famous because... um I've said this before that like having famous people be your friends, like I would love that. Not because they're famous, but because if you are famous, that means that you have to be great at something. And if people who are great acknowledge me as one of their peers, then that means that I also have to be like on this level with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not, not famous for like, you know, taking my shirt off and fucking grinding on a pillow or anything, but like famous for like work that I've done. Right. And then being like, you're great at this thing. And like these, this is a room full of great people who are great at acting or music or this or that. You know what I'm saying? You also meet people you would never meet. Yeah. If you weren't famous. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. Let's get to the next one. Uh, before making a phone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Yes. Yes. Any job interview, like I've ever called, I've rehearsed even just like, Calling like my mom, I'll rehearse it. You rehearse your phone calls or your mom? Yeah, just like like what I'm gonna say. Like, like you're there and you're like, "Hey, mom, what's going on?" Uh, well, I don't same with you. <laughs> no, but like, not not to that extent. But it's like when I call you, I hate phone calls. I hate them. I hate talking on the phone. Okay. So I have to have something, a script, a script to try and talk to you about. Because like, if I don't, I'm one of the worst people on the phone of all time. You you've known that for a fact. If I don't have anything to talk about and I call you, it's terrible for conversation. Yeah, but you won't just hang up. You'll just keep going. I'm like, uh, Danny, it, this is over now. Yeah. So that's why I have to like kind of rehearse a little bit. There has to be something. For me to physically call you, there has to be something I really need to talk to you about. I don't know if I rehearse phone calls, but I do rehearse arguments. Oh, yeah. I've done it in the shower where I pretend like I'm out in the rain. I'm like, no, you, you, no, you don't fucking understand, man. Yeah, no, I've, I've done that. I've done that. But you can't say it too loud because you're afraid people can hear you. But, like, you let the water hit you and you pretend you're standing out in the rain arguing with your friend. You're like, no, man, you don't fucking understand, bro. <laughs> I've done that mad I've, times. I've rehearsed text. Like, Excuse? I've wrote text all the way out. Deleted them? Changed them around. I've rehearsed them, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's drafting a long text. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone does that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you ever leave out just, like, one word when you text? On purpose? Like, I, I or, like, uh... No, sometimes I, I that write... That happens to me all the time. Sometimes I write things, but like, words, sort of like a minor dyslexic episode, where I'll say, like, I'm going to the store, and I'll write, I am store going, and be like, oh, 
I gotta switch them. Oh, that might just be not dyslexia. fully, not fully out. Right, like, I don't right. Fl- like, I just like, I just start to. I'm like, oh shit! So I have to like re go. I do that constantly. I like, I'll be like, yo, I'm dying. Like, yo, instead of like, yo, I am dying, or yeah. yo, I'm dying. For yeah. some reason, I'm always, I always miss a word. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Busy brain. Busy brain. Uh, next question: What would constitute a perfect day for you? Um. No anxiety. <laughs> you know? Yeah. My body just feels like good. Just good. Yeah. Like that would be like one. Two. Uh I did everything that I wanted that I told myself I was gonna do that day before. Well, what are these things? Like, um take my dog for a walk at, at six AM. Okay. Or uh go to the gym. Yeah. You know, and then take him for another walk and then do that. Like uh-huh. that would be like those mini, like those minor things would help me up here to like actually have like a grasp on like the perfect day mm-hmm. and then be able to get a good night's sleep after a nice home cooked dinner. You skipped That's it. most of the hours of the day there. Well, no, but what I mean like is that and then perform well here. You know? Why would your perfect day be a work day? Well, I'm just I'm just trying to do it like a normal day. No, no, no. Your my, perfect day. My perfect day, no work, nothing. Whatever you want. It's stay, a hypothetical. Stay at home with my dog. That's I'll, your perfect day. Yeah, and do everything with my dog. So all day. theoretically, if you were to live a perfect life, that's all it would consist of. Yeah, that and that and uh, have my family and, and my lady around. I'm good. That'd be a great day for me. Barbecue, dog, my lady. Where is it? At my parents' house. At your parents' house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have that. Just a nice where everyone's just okay. Yeah. Everyone's good. That's what I would like. Yeah. Um, I thought it had to be like a, like a weekday. No, no, no. Just a perfect day. What's your perfect day? Yeah. That would be my perfect day. Then. Uh, I would say my perfect day. Uh, there's one in my head and there's only, there's a, a time where I felt like there's only been one moment in my life where I feel like this is, the greatest like, day of my life. This is the per- this is perfect right now. Yeah. Um and I believe it was like the day before me and all my friends are going on vacation and we were at my mom's house and like obviously my family's there cuz we all lived there at the time and all like all of my friends are there. And these like girls that we've been friends with for our entire lives are there as well. And we were all just like sitting out on the balcony and I remember just looking around and being like, yo, this is everyone that I fucking care about right now. Right. Like, this is fucking awesome. Isn't it weird how your mind clicks like that? Like, you'll go home and be like, that was just a great day. Yeah. <laughs> like, your body yeah, has a great. way of telling you. It's weird. And I think now my perfect day, which I'm trying to, like, uh, bring to fruition is kind of... Um, remember I talked to you about, like, the retreat? Yeah. How I want to do a retreat? Yeah. Um, so people don't know about this, but I want to do this retreat where it's, like, uh, three or four days, absolutely no phone at all like not checking the time not no uber no maps no gps nothing can you take pictures no if you want bring a disposable camera but no no pictures uh and i wanted to go to some place sort of like the hampton's house that we went just because like that was like fresh in my mind where there's a pool there's grills we can make our own food yeah there was a farmer's market where we can go buy fresh food to make that night um and uh, you know, there's grass, there's wildlife around, and all that shit. Just a little, just a bit of everything. There was instruments that instruments. you were singing and shit. No power in the motherfucking house. So that day where we had no power. Yeah. You know, uh, and I mean, we had our phones, but we ha- there was no power. And like, if I wasn't using my phone at all, and all the people that were there on that day that I was talking about before were there, and they all were doing the same thing. Like no one was on their phone. No one had their phone out. No one was texting or looking down or talking or whatever. It's just, we're out in the moment in the moment where there's a house there, but it's also sort of like wildernessy. Right. And, uh, you know, people are fucking singing songs. There's a fire, there's a pool and everyone's just having a good time. Like I could do that every day for the rest of my life. And I wouldn't even like, like that's literally what I plan on doing eventually. That's a pretty perfect day. Yeah. It's ama- it would be amazing. Yeah. Like, that's my perfect day. That's, but I'm, That's perfect day. But, yeah. I think... And also, like, being up at, like, bef- right before the sun. That's my favorite time. And just to watch, like... The sun come up. That's my favorite time. Because it's super quiet. It's, like, nice out. It's a little breezy. It's also cool that, like... Well, it's... 
in a way, it's kind of sad. Like we sleep through that a lot of the time. Yeah. There's a lot of beautiful shit that happens before you wake up. Oh yeah, dude. You know, the so animals like, are out. Yeah. Because like during the, I mean, this is New York City, so like during the day, there's cars, there's people walking around. Like people, the fucking animals are hiding. Yeah. But in the morning, it's like they've been out all night, so they're still kind of like, oh, yeah, it's still cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of see more shit. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. Don't let it get away. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the bass go for the All right, cool. Good oh, my God. That's so crazy. The ne- <laughs> Do you like you too? No. The no. next question is, when did you last sing to yourself to oh, someone else? Oh, right, not right there. I do it all the time now. And I think you put that in me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I feel I'm like s- my voice has gotten better since I met you. Of course. Which I don't know how that's possible. Well, you got to match. You got to match up. Is you gotta it, is that, but like you got a competitive energy. Yeah, but it doesn't mean if you hang out with fucking Whitney Houston and you start to like sound better. No, but if you hear me singing stuff in different tones and different pitches, like you're going to subconsciously try, try to, to do to that. Try to emulate that? Yeah. I guess so. You know what I mean? You never really tried to do it. Yeah, no. So now if you hear somebody doing it constantly, constantly, you're going to do it. I love singing. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things. Yeah. I, uh, we drove from... Uh, uh, from Zion to Las Vegas, it's like two and a half hours. Yeah, and I sang the whole time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would say that I probably like no bullshit. I probably sing like six hours a day. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like actual like singing all the time. Yeah, Danny sings a lot. Yeah, it ke- it keeps me from like it keeps me balanced. Singing? Yeah, it does. It's just enjoy. It's just it's just enjoyable. enjoyable, and especially like if you sound kind of good, it's like even better. It's even better, and you're like, oh god, I fucking killed that. Yeah, now. yeah. I'm like, yeah, nailed that one. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's. I that. guess there was that answer right there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question here. <clears throat> if you were able to live to the age of ninety and retain either the mind or body of a thirty year old for the last sixty years of your life, which would you want? So you're thirty now. Right. So the next 60 years, would you rather have the body or mind of a 30 year old? You go first this time. I'm going to take the mind easily. I'm going to take the mind, too. Yeah. I look forward to getting out of shape. Like, I don't have a I don't have the body at 30. I don't have the 30 year old body right now. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, but I got, but my mind's still there. Your body's like forty-seven. Yeah, you know, but like my, but my <laughs> mind is still there. Like I don't want to be like, yo, I'm ripped, but like I got, I, I'm applesauce I'm like, brain. Yeah, exactly. What I'm saying. You know, like I want to have a fucking yeah, be man. able to have a be like Pro- Professor Xavier. My my, and, and also your your reality is your perception. Yeah. Of reality, so whatever you think is what it is. I know. So you know, your I'm, mind is the only thing that matters. It doesn't help if I'm. 90 years like I had the body of a 30 year old and I think that light over there is a fucking umbrella yeah dude if I'm ripped up at 90 like no one's gonna fuck me yeah Be like yeah you're 90 though like yeah. I don't give a fuck if you have abs like we'll put you on like Ripley's it, it, believe it or not or yeah but we're shit. not we're not gonna bang yeah. you no Jesus you're old cock Be able you to even f- have a smooth 30 year old dick though and it works yeah I'm good I'm good yeah I'm also because, good because yeah I don't wanna have those moments where like you can't remember shit like yeah like your family I don't wanna deal with any of that the shit. other day I started thinking about memories and like I, just like just in the general I, the idea of memories yeah. and, and how like how important that is like I, I like I started I don't know how my mind goes you know that but like yeah. I started to really think about what memories are and if like like how valuable that is yeah like that's the only thing that can progress anybody and I always think about when I think about memories too. It's like, you know that game where you would drop a quarter in, and it would push like the rest of those quarters yeah. off like the edge. I wonder like if your if your mind gets rid of any memories that you could have remembered like a day ago. You know what I'm saying? No. Like like long term memories. So say like I did something when I was five. Yeah. Like I wonder like can I still forget that or since it's in my long term memory it's gonna stay there. No, it's there. It's there, right? Short-term memory is... I think if at 30 you remember something from when you were five years old, I don't think it's going anywhere. Yeah. Like, that clearly has resonated. Do You forget a lot of stuff, but I also think that you can unlock a lot of memories if you really start to think about that's it. What I, that's what... Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question. Oof. Do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? Yeah. Um, a heart attack. Okay. I don't know if I do. Yeah, I think I'll probably have a, I'll probably have some kind of like cardiac arrest or something. Do I have a secret hunch about how it will die? 
I, I honestly, I don't. I don't have a secret hunch. I've never really thought about it. I've never like whatever. Like when I, usually when I ask people, they ha- they have something. They're like, oh, car accident or yeah. like something. And like they have a snap answer. Like I never, I've never really thought about that. Probably because I'm scared of that, and I wouldn't want to know ever. No, I, I, I just I'm just going off like family history. Like my dad's had two. Yeah. My uncle died of one. Uh, and I'm sure I think he had one before that too. So like I'll probably clock out like that <laughs> clock out like that <laughs> that's a funny way of wording it yeah right Just punch it in punch, punch it out guys punch it out guys take it easy take have, it a, have a good night boys I'll see you guys Monday <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a good night boys next question for what in your life do you feel most grateful um I mean I have two but it's, yeah um, my fiance for sure okay uh you want me to elaborate? If you want. Uh, no, no. Cause I thought you said okay. I thought you were gonna answer. No, I mean, I, what do I feel most grateful? I don't know. I guess just like the. Well, I'm extremely blessed as far as friends and family goes. Yeah. Like I know a bunch of people that are just like fucking good people, and I have a ton of friends, which people don't have, but I have a lot. Yeah, you have like too many friends. I don't have too. No, many. No, no, but I mean, it's like yo, you have so many friends. Like I don't know how you could like do like satisfy that many people well it's not even about that because that's the beauty of it like we have friends that are like they we are the age range is like there's people two older two years older than me one year older than me there's my age there's a year younger and there's two years younger so it's just like we're all over the place yeah but we've always just been like anytime and i took so much pride in this like growing up anytime anyone has like we like we met i met somebody and like i'm like oh you gotta hang out with our friends yeah and after they hang out it's like yo your friends are fucking fun oh yeah they're great yeah they're 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 a great group good group so sure i I like uh, i guess i'm grateful for that and my family is just fucking ridiculous yeah all of them like the extended family everybody like everyone's like hilarious they're all like good people like they keep you you know driven and shit so uh, you know i'm I'm grateful for that because a lot of people don't have that shit either yeah for sure so that that's my that's my answer um, ooh, if you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Um, my parents to keep a, a better eye on me, I would say. Like, uh, I think, uh, if we had like a more, like a family unit, like we sat down and like, I even said it yesterday, actually, which is weird. We never really ate family dinner. Yeah. I would have liked that. I think that would have been a lot better to keep everybody in the loop. But, uh kind of everyone just kind of gathered their food and like went to their area mm-hmm. so like i would like to do that yeah you know i i think it it, it uh makes you closer yeah it builds it builds a family foundation you know like what i mean mor- some team morale team morale team morale team, you build, know? team bonding it just like it answers questions you know you don't you get to see how everybody's day is going you know yeah, yeah. But like we just came and went like scavengers would grab food and just run away. Yeah, we would we would have dinner every night together yeah. growing up when we were super young. See, that's big. That's yeah, a big huge. deal. Yeah, and on you Fridays know? we had family game night too. That's a big deal. I don't know how long that lasted because it wasn't like it just became fucking WWF in there probably after after, <laughs> <laughs> after <laughs> a certain amount of time. No, we used to play like Scrabble and, and like Trivial Pursuit on Friday. That's I wish I had that shit. Yeah. You know? But like I don't know if I would change anything about the way I was gr- I, I was brought up because you know, I'm, I'm cool with like the person I've become honestly. And I think that, uh, you know, cause there was a lot of fucked up shit that yeah. happened in my house and it wasn't like sunshine and rainbows. And yeah, we had dinner together. And like when I was like four years old, we had family game night, Right. but there was a lot of shit that happened. That was really bad that a lot of people don't know. Uh, but I, I have grown to, enjoy those things too like the bad shit because you 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 learn from that and you become a stronger person and you yeah like, you know what i'm saying so yeah, i don't know if i would change it, like, it and be like oh man i wish it was perfect because then i'd probably be a fucking loser yeah I'd be an asshole you know what i mean be one of those people that just walks around jerry right and you're like shut fuck you yeah there's no way you're that like happy. go th- go through something yeah would you you know <laughs> it's like can you like cat the guy like has like a 30 year old cat like yeah cat like, hasn't um, even died yeah it's like yo let your cat go yeah jesus like be sad yeah, one day. i don't know he just keeps living i don't know he's kicking you know oh, he's still eating my you know my mom's now she's 108 yeah, yeah she's still yeah, going yeah she's doing good she still walks yeah we hit the lotto so be I sad don't know. yeah be sad like the rest something. of something be a little shaded yeah you fuck be guess. mad hate something hate something um all right what else we got 
All right, this is the last one before I'm going to do uh, ads. Okay. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained one uh, uh, <sighs> quality. Not a pound, please. No. <laughs> If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? Um, one ability or quality. It's not like f- fucking fly. N- no, it's, like uh, realistic. Yeah, not, right? s- not supernatural one. I could lift a fucking bus. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, be fucking strong. I would be more schedule oriented. Why the fuck would you waste this on that? What, that's the ability you said. I, I was gonna fly, and then I want a realistic one. Yeah, I know, but that, it could be anything. Like you, could, you could work on that and make it happen. It's not that hard. You're gonna waste some magic. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Like the ability, like be really good at guitar or something. Any, yes, anything. Oh yeah, then I would just be like a really good uh, guitar player. Yeah, or, or or pianist, pianist. Yeah, I think it, I think mine would kind of be that too. Like yeah, the, the ability to just learn, like. Uh, Oh, you know what? Actually, I would want to know in a second language. That's a good one too. That's a great one. Like maybe I would, I would, I would do Spanish. Yeah, and just have the ability to. Oh, here it is. I could also play guitar well enough right now. Is this cheating if I say I want the ability to like be able to learn like a four-year-old or like a three-year-old? Yeah, that's not that's not obtainable. Yeah. Can't be a four-year-old. I if I can't fly, you can't be four, bro. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll so there's there's a couple things. So one. Would either, it would either be one of these things. Well, so, you get multiple ones? No, no, no. I'm just giving like, like this is the ones that right, I would pick right, from. Right, right, it right. would either be like to wake up and I just can speak like fluent Spanish. Yeah. Uh, or just have like perfect teeth. Yeah, yeah, that too. That'd yeah, be yeah, that'd be dope. That'd, that'd be, be dope. dope. Um, but you could, you could get perfect teeth. Yeah, I know. But, you know. Uh. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, see. Or uh, no, see. I went, I was gonna go hypothetical. I was gonna go supernatural again. Teleportation would be so sick, though. Oh, I thought you meant like Carlos Santana supernatural, the album. I was like, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Damn, you want to be Carlos Santana? I would just want the album. Yeah, I, just, I would just like want the album there when I woke up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. All right, uh, let me get to these ads real quick, um, and then we'll, we'll we'll move on with the rest of the test. Yeah, and we're gonna find out if we're in love. I mean, that goes without saying, I think. That's obvious. All right, let's get to this. The first one we have here is Quip. Okay, the best way to ease back into your uh, post-summer routine, start it up before September, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Simplify the morning and evening now with a simpler electric toothbrush from Quip. A simpler. Simpler electric toothbrush from Quip. Nice. Uh, But Quip, electric toothbrush, vibrates. It's got a... uh, 30 second or 30 second pulse to remind you when to switch sides because you got to brush your teeth for two minutes. That's a dentist recommended time, folks. Use your noodle. Use your nudes. Uh, Wait. Use your noodle. Use your noodle. Don't sexualize everything. I I, I didn't want to do that. Um, But yeah, so I I, I love this toothbrush. It never makes me like, (laughs) makes my my gums bleed. You ever buy like a toothbrush? I just did this, but you buy a toothbrush when you go somewhere. Yeah. And then you get it and it's got these weird like, and it makes you bleed. And I'm like, okay. Do you put water on your toothpaste? Before or do you raw dog it? I don't raw dog it. I think you're supposed to. I don't know. If anybody it's knows, so let me dry. Know. I know it's gross. It's like brushing your teeth with peanut butter. Ooh, that it, sounds pretty good. Though. It sounds delicious. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's great. And the best part about Quip is that, um, on a dentist recommended uh, recommended schedule, you get new brush heads for just five dollars, ladies and gentlemen. And that's every three months, I believe. Yep. Three months. That's a dentist recommended um, schedule, right? That's there. a dentist recommended schedule, everybody. Um, but yeah, if you want to get a quip, they just start at just twenty five dollars. If you go to getquip.com slash basement right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That is G E T Q U I P dot com slash basement. Uh you get your first refill pack for Frizzle. Okay, so go check out Quip, guys. Um, next we have my bookie, which is the site you gotta use if you're gonna be betting your money in uh, during this football season, okay? Oh, yeah. I made a couple dollars off of week one. Not me. And I'll be honest, I made $30 off of week one. Hey, it's, I'm telling you, it's you go better down, than losing. And I know. You go down, and I'm like, oh, God. So I start, I start making bets to like, get back up there, and I won $30. I'm like, I'm cool. It's better than losing. It's better than losing, all right? Um, but you go to my bookie. It's easy, and they pay when you win. Um, yeah, and let's face it. When you're betting, it's just as uh, – <laughs> where you're betting is just as important as – who you're betting on. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so go check out my bookie. Um, 
you know, they have anything. You have props, you have all the games, spreads, over-unders, whatever you want. Um, and right now they will um, match your first deposit. They will double your first deposit. So if you put in hundred dollars, they'll put another hundred dollars. So you have two hundred dollars. Um, use the promo code basement to activate that offer. Offer to activate that offer. Um, again, that is a promo code basement. Visit mybookie.ag today uh, and put in that promo code basement to activate that um, offer of doubling your first deposit. Go check out my bookie peeps. Get okay, your, get your bet on. Get your, get your bet on. Uh, next, we have Away, which uh, creates thoughtful products designed to change how you see the world. Uh, it's suitcases, ladies I, and gentlemen. They sent us some. I friggin' love them. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using it. They are amazing. I'm heading to Disney next month. <sighs> next month. I'll be awaying on that. Um, They're awesome. Yeah, they have um, this thing called the Carry On, lightweight durable shell that's made uh, to last a lifetime of travel okay four 360 spinner wheels guarantee a smooth ride none of that like oh, oh no no like at the grocery store you got the <laughs> yo, i like that yo the carts at home depot though Come oh the, the, get some wheels dude Jeez. get it away some get oil some away some, wheels yeah, get some there. away wheels um they have the bigger carry-on um it's a, it's just sized up to make the most of like the overhead bin you know what I'm saying? If you need a little more room, but it still fits in the overhead, bang bang. Um, but yeah, they have some key features. They're they're la they're designed to last a lifetime. They have a hundred day trial on everything um, that they make. Uh, there's free shipping on any away order with um, you know within the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Um, but yeah, if you want to see it for yourself, you can even go. They have stores in New York, Austin, L.A., San Francisco, Boston, Chicago, and London. Uh, but yeah. Um, for $20 off your suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash basement. Use the promo code basement during checkout. That is $20 off of uh, a suitcase. Visit awaytravel.com slash a basement, folks. Wor worth every penny. Worth every penny. They make top-of-the-line luggage. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, next we have our last sponsor for today is Honey. Um, do you remember Honey? I do remember Honey. Now, Honey, man, you got to download Honey, dog. Uh, nine times out of ten, shopping online beats going to the store. I think those I say, numbers are low. I would say it's ten out of ten. I would definitely say it's every 100 time. hundred out of a hundred. Yes, it is. Um, but nine times out of ten, you're also overpaying when you shop online. True that. Yeah. True you that. You pay for like shipping, handling. They be killing y'all. They be killing y'all, man. Um, but yeah, Honey is a free browser extension that helps you save money everywhere you shop online. It finds coupon codes and other discounts across the web and applies them automatically. Automatic. So you saving bread without even realizing what's happening. Yeah, but the thing that sucks about Honey probably is that you probably have to pay for it. Ah, uh, nah, it's free, dog. What? <laughs> it's a free browser extension. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So you just saving money. Just download Honey. So I'm saving money? And it's free with Honey? Yeah, bro. Wow. And that rhyme, too. Bars. Bang, bang, bang. Um, but yeah, uh, Honey uh, users save on an uh, average of $126 a year. That adds up, dog. It do. Depending on how much you shop. They do what it does. I but shop a lot. I know. You would save way more than $126. 100%. Um, but yeah, it has over 100,000 five-star reviews on Google Chrome Store. That's absurd. Yeah. Download, honey, people. Uh, it just makes sense. It's free to use. Install on your computer in just two clicks. It'll save you money so you can treat yourself to something nice. Maybe go out to a nice dinner. Ooh. You know what I mean? Uh, get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash basement. That's joinhoney.com slash basement for free, peeps. Go check out honey. Honey's pretty sweet. Honey is pretty sweet. Oh, I'm almost on my laptop. We got the we got some quizzes going, dog. Oh yeah, damn. I got a snap back. Mm. All right. <sighs> Here we are. Back in the thick of it. Back in the thick of things. We're having we're having one of those serious episodes. Yeah, here, it's okay? cool. We're not talking about pee pee poo poo titty too too. Titty too too fat ass booty clapping. Exactly. We're not going there. We're nah, going not serious. Not right now, not right now. Okay. Real thugs cry. Next question. <laughs> If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Uh, my future, probably. Why the hell would you want to know that? Because I'm one of those people that wants to know, like, yo, I have, like, you know I'm a hypochondriac. Yes. So, like, I just want to know, like, yo, just be like your future, like, yo, you're going to make it this far? I'm like, all right, all right, straight. 
but then you would live your life differently. Nah, hell no. If you knew you were, gonna, I think I would live my life better. I think. But I think if you lived, if you knew, like, oh, yo, you're gonna you're gonna live to be ninety three. You're like, oh, fuck it, I'll just eat whatever then. Nah, I think I would live it better. I would. I would. I don't think so. I think as soon as you put a time on it, it would make me a little like it would make me want to do things. I think it would. What if you found out it was like forty eight? Then I'm really gonna have to do some things. Yeah, but then I would feel like like I, I wouldn't want to live under panic. I wouldn't get married. If it was forty eight. Yeah. If I if I looked into a crystal ball and was like, yo, I'm gonna die at forty eight, I'd be like, yo, and like I could prove it, I wouldn't get married. <laughs> I wouldn't put someone through that. Yeah, it's tough. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you'd be a, a young dad. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, like I don't want to do that to you. Like, I'm gonna die at forty eight. <sighs> I don't know if I would want to know anything, but the truth about myself, I guess it would be, um, I know myself. Yeah, I do too. I would just want to know what, the, uh, like who's behind this crystal ball. That's what I'm saying. But I like, I like for me, I'm very in tune with myself. Right. Like I know when I fuck up and when I don't like, I know when, like what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm not. I know, like I'm very aware. Mm -hmm. I'm very self-aware. I'm very aware. That I'm saying aware a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A whole bunch. <laughs> but that, I'm good on that. Yeah. The future is the scariest thing for me. Because I live constantly in fear. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I really do. I, I, I wish I wish I could. I wish I could be, like, less fearful. And that would help ease my fear. That's so weird. Because for me, the future is, like, a completely different thing. Like, I look forward to the... Uh, the mystery of the future like anything's possible you know like even if i'm having a bad day at least i know i have the future like i could figure it out and i could get there no matter what yeah you know so I, for me to for me to know that would kind of take away like the mystique of the future i just think I, I'm, I'm obsessed with dying like thinking about like dying really yeah i think people go through uh <sighs> like a more a more a more a, a morality phase a, mort a mortality phase What are you asking? Like they start thinking about their own mortality Yeah, like, yeah a yeah. lot Yeah So like maybe I'm in one of those right now Yeah I think I, I've gone through that Where it's like I, It keeps you up at night Thinking yeah, about like dude. Yo man I'm gonna die one day like, Yeah What does that mean? And like You know I, I try not to let that consume me But I, like I said I, I don't think about the future I, I don't think about like dying I don't associate that with the future I'll, I, I'll be honest with you Like I'll go to sleep almost every night And be like yo Like I wonder if it's the last time I'll ever go to sleep Jesus, dude. Yeah, man. I'm being as honest as possible. Well, honestly. that's why I think you need to change the way you think as far as like future and, and, and your death are different things. Yes, yeah. your death is in the future, but there's way more in the future than just that. Yeah, yeah, That's for sure. one thing. There's so many other things. Like I go to sleep thinking about like like the possibilities of what you can make your life. Yeah. Like what you what you can become, what you can get done, what, yeah. and how much time that, that takes. Like I always think about like uh, – you know, last year, like you can pinpoint times where you're like, oh, I'm going to do this. And, but you fizzle out of it eventually. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. yo, today, if I would have just that day kept doing it every single day, I got where it. would I be right now? Yeah. And it's like you, that's why how I think of like, even something as simple as the gym. Like, yo, if I stayed doing the gym and I right. stayed like, you know, exercising as hard as I was like during this phase where I was for like three months, it was like, if I just kept that up and t today I'd be in like the shape I want to be in. And like, how'd you get out of that, that mortality phase though? I just, I, I like how'd just, you stop, how'd you stop doing that? Asking for a friend. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I refuse to let it consume me. Cause I, I think that it takes away from my life, my right. actual life, my present life. And like, this is all I have. And you, when you start to realize that it's just part of it and it'll happen no matter what. Yeah. It's like, you can be afraid of it yeah. happening, but why are you afraid of it? See, just think about this whole note. Why are you, why is everyone afraid of death? Because then they can't live. But if you live your entire life, in fear of death, it's already killed you. <laughs> yeah, but like that was fucking hard. Yeah, it was. Did you yeah. hear that? Cl somebody clipped that. That was fire. Josh, do your job. Yo, that was that was wild. But no, but it's true. No, it is true. It. it is true. But it's like you can't let it hinder you from doing other things. Right, and being in fear all the time. But like it doesn't like hinder me like that. What it does though, it's like it's just like I'm constantly thinking about it. Yeah, you know, it's not like. But that's what it. That's it's it's helping. It's stopping you from. Having oh, a good night's sleep. Oh, it's also stopping me from just thinking about other things like I could think about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hindering you no matter what. Yeah, and it's, for sure. And it's like a, a, a pointless thought. Yeah. Like, I'm not afraid to die. I'm really not. But my thing is, is like, I don't know why it's so interesting to me. 
because it's a, it's the unknown. Yeah. It's the one thing that we will yeah. never like know, really. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it has no like. Which sucks. I refuse to let it have an effect on me. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And like it does, of course. We're all yeah, human, and yeah, we yeah, go yeah, through. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, eventually, it just becomes like, fuck this, dude. Whatever. Yeah. You know, and and that's just what it is. Damn, this is a crazy episode, man. <laughs> Uh, what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Oh, sorry. Fuck. All right, we'll go with that. We'll do that one. And we'll do the next one. I skipped over. One. No, you can go back to the next one. No, no, I, no I, I already said it. Okay, the greatest accomplishment of my life. Yeah. Um. Not going to college. Not an accomplishment. No, no, no. I, I, if for me. For me. Why would that be an accomplishment? That because, is not an accomplishment. Because it led me to something. It led me to doing what I'm doing right now. But that's, which is not, goes, but which that's not an accomplishment. I think doing what... Uh, entertaining people. That's the answer. That not going to college. No, but you I like... To, accomplish not going yeah, yeah, to college. Yeah, I know. But like, I like to preface things. You know what I mean? I don't want to just be like this. So what is your accomplishment? So my accomplishment is actually being able to make a living doing entertainment right now. Right. And um, if I would have went the route that was laid out for me... By my surrounding and my community, yeah. I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, I'd be like, you know, I'm not saying I wouldn't be happy doing something else, something else, but like, you know, I'm truly happy doing what I'm doing for a living right now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I wake up happy every day. I'm like, yeah. Like, there's some times where I'm like, yo, I can't believe this is my job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I have to be like, yo, like this is, it's crazy. And it's like, if I would have went to school and like I was studying social work, like if I, would I be good at it? Maybe. But like, I think I'd rather be doing this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I agree. I think my greatest accomplishment, um, what was that? Oh, no. I thought you were going to say me. Oh, no. Damn it. How, how did I, what I, I, I accomplished you? No, nah, I mean like, you know, you brought me on, you know what I'm saying? You're misunderstanding the word accomplishment. I understand. I'm messing around right now. Yeah, I bet you are, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a cream soda. <laughs> Give me a cream soda. Go get me a water. Um, what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? I know it. What? Can I guess? Sure. Um, buying your house. Yeah. Yeah. That's an amazing accomplishment. When you first told me that, I cried. Do you remember that? No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to that story. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that's I it. love that story. Yeah, my mom grew up in that house. Yeah. That's the thing. When I remember when you told me that. I started, I'm fucking crying right now. <laughs> well, look at him go. I know. We got him. No. But I'm telling you, that's one of the most beautiful... Sorry. That's one of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard. Yeah. It's, and, and, and it's something that when someone close to you tells you that, it shows you it's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you hear these stories all the time. Like, you see them on the internet. Like, oh, I paid my parents' mortgage off. And it's like a YouTube video. But it's still, like, it's external. It's out there. Yeah. But to, like, to talk to somebody and be like, yo, like, I bought my mom's house. It makes it more real. Right. It's, it's just a dope story. It's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just something that it's like wow like one it's somebody it's he put his somebody his family before himself and then also he did something that a lot of people aspire to do right so that's why like i remember when i first heard that story that shit knocked me on my ass i don't even remember that yeah it was that it was it started when we went to the ufc fights remember oh which ones I feel like we've been to a couple. Uh, Young Jacek, Nama Hunis. Okay. Won. Lost a lot of money that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. But I remember you started telling me that story. And then you were like, I'll tell you later. And then you told me later. And in the car, I started to cry. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. That. You're probably a little drunk, but uh, I just I remember. Probably a lot of drunk. I remember when I got home, I was like, that was one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. Because <laughs> yeah, it's man. real, man. Yeah, it's yeah. It's fucking real. Yeah. I, I, I Very rarely in my life am I ever like... Oh man, that was cool. Like I remember my mom used to say all the time, like, "Aren't you excited? Like, why are you not excited?" Because I was never excited about like these things. You're still like that, though. I am because I really don't think that like anything I've done recently has been like super exciting. Yeah. Where I'm like, you know, whatever. Like, 
there's a lot of cool accomplishments that whatever, but the way that I work and like the whole future thing that I was talking about before, like I have an idea of what I want to do. Like then I'll be like, bro, see, like yeah, this but, is what I'm excited about. But if for. you do, if you get there, I don't think you will. No, nah, I think I will. I, I, Cause right now I always see you as like, you're a what's next guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stop and smell the roses guy. Maybe stop too much and smell the roses. <laughs> Take a nap yeah, next I, to the roses. I, I double back and smell the roses yeah. sometimes. You know what I mean? I'll do a lap. Yeah. I think you I think you for... Uh, I could be wrong. And this isn't a bad thing. But I think that you're always going to be a... What's next for me? What can I do next? I I, I am. I'll never I'll never stop doing that. Yeah. But, but but I can recognize when there's like... Because like the house thing. When I, when yeah. I, when I bought the house, like I, I, I knew like... This is this is something that I'm never gonna forget, and like I'm I'm good. I've been playing with house money since that day, like no that, pun intended. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you. That's yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I've been. Uh, well, maybe hopefully I'm not playing with house money because I mean we would have to probably get rid of that shit if I was playing. With yeah. Money. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, but that since then it's like. W- What's gonna be better than that? Nothing. Honestly, like I don't know if anything ever is ever gonna be better than that. It, it, the it, only thing that would be better than that is if I was able to buy like an estate yeah. that had like a big ass and my put, entire like, family could live in there. Your mom won't move out of here. Fuck no. Nah, she would. Nah, she wouldn't. Nah, she would. If I could you keep, think so? I think she would. I think like my dream is to have a at least at, at minimum like to me a realistic thought is a a summer house. Yeah. Um, where everyone can live, like all, like my immediate family, oh, where there's just know. like rooms for everything and like uh, their children or like whatever, and like just a big ass summer house that in the summer, like we all live there. Right. You know. Where's but, my room though? That's a uh, real question. I mean, there's a, there is uh, like a, a side house. There's a, a guest house. Yeah, and there in the side house there is a basement where there is a closet. Okay. That's and it. That's, that's it. You could, could fit a bed in there. I'm good. But that's probably all. I'll, I'll come watch the dogs. There's no electricity or Wi-Fi in that house, but you could come into the, like, the kitchen of just don't go into the living room with your Between shoes Between the on. hours of like 1 and 4 a.m., I could use the kitchen. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. There's people that live like that, by the way. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> and it's probably dope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pool's sick, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what do you value most in a friendship? Honesty. Like I would like my friends to be honest with me, yeah. About like how I am to them, okay. And how and how I make them feel because a realist, a real realistically, we don't really know how we make other people feel. Yeah. You know, um, especially men, we we shit on Hi- each other a lot, and we hide a lot, and we hide a lot. We've been programmed to hide these things, hide that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because even if I were to bring it to some guy friends, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying like. If I was like, yo, like that kind of hurt my feelings. Some dudes would be like, what? Yeah, like shut up. Shut the fuck up. Bitch. But like, but like I, I like just honesty within my friends. Because I went through a period where I wouldn't say what was on my mind all the time. Right. Or, or you know, I would say things that people would just want to hear just to like avoid confrontation or, or avoid, ha- uh, you know, po- possibly losing that person as a friend. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But for me, it's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's just an, an honest thing. I think the older you get, the less bullshit you want to put up with. Yeah, I th- that's just what where I'm at. And now. honesty is probably the answer because also honesty, you get people who push you. They're honest with you and being like, "Yo, dude, yeah. like get your fucking shit together." Yes, you know? yeah. And like you want that. You don't want people around you just being nice. No. And and shit. No. You know? and, 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 and even someone who's not because like. Another answer that I get all the time is like loyalty from your friends. But even if someone was loyal, I would rather them be honest than loyal because even if they're disloyal, I could start learn learn stuff from you if you are honest with me. Yeah, and then it's also the like loyalty too. It's like, dude, what are we fucking Spartans? Oh yeah, we were a gang. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, like all I ask for you is to be honest with me, and then like, yo, something fi- pops off in the street, I- I- I'm fighting with you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only loyalty I want. Yeah, like if it's like, yo, like we were supposed to watch football on Sunday. But, like, your girlfriend gave you a hard time and, like, you just don't want to argue with her so you're staying home. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> I'm just like, yo, like, is that, is that what we're talking loyalty up to now? Yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. Well, you know? Um, is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Uh, stand-up comedy. And because I'm afraid I'll be bad at it. Over music? Um, you want to know what it is? I know music. I can be uh, successful at if I did it in my head. 
Okay. And I've seen the reception that it has. Me not just doing it is just laziness. Right. That's all that comes down to. Right. But stand up, I don't know if I'd be good at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's like it's the double, like the fear of doing it and also knowing that most things that I've put my mind to in my life, I've been good at. Mm-hmm. I feel I'm scared this is the one thing I wouldn't be good at. Stand up. Yeah. I'm afraid of not being good at it. I think uh, I was just, I was like that in school, too. I was afraid people would think I was dumb, so I wouldn't go to class. Which made you dumb. Which made me dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Double-edged sword. Yeah, there. yeah. But that's that's just how it is. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, would stand up. Like, I, I guess that's, I mean, you know what it is? I, what I think it is, I think that the one time, like, you always were a funny kid growing up, and then the one time you put yourself out there with Vine, it ended up working out and you were protected by the screen. Yeah. So you weren't, you didn't have to deal with anyone saying bad things. So it was like, yeah. now that you got that instant gratification and then you had like Instagram, some of it spilled over to that. Yep. Like you've never had to deal with like actually being good. Cause That's it, was what just, I'm saying. it was just people who were fans of you. That's what I'm saying. So, so now it's like, I, you enter a whole nother jungle there because now you feel like the bar is set so high of being like, Everyone's looking at me as like, this dude is like funny. I swear to God. Yeah. And then you get out there and it's like, yo, am I going to be the people that they think I am? It's, it's just a whole nother monster. Yeah. So like, that's what scares me. And that's honestly the reason why I haven't done it either. Yeah. I think that's why. But, uh, but I, it also is a combination of other things of like, I wanted to just focus on the digital side of things because I thought that was the future of it. Right. But I don't think stand-up comedy is going anywhere by any means. It's never but, it's never not going to go anywhere. No, no, no. And, and you know, we want to do a tour. Yeah. Like, we want to do a Basement Yard tour in, in, like, next year. In 2020, we oh, want to go... I'm going to have to do it. We're going to many cities, and we want to do a live show and just fucking see all you people there and do some stand-up yeah. and do so, this shit and, like, whatever. But it's... But it's been in the works for so long, and I think it's subconsciously because we both feel like this, where it's like, oh, we're so nervous to like get out there and yeah. like do this shit. But I literally like the other day. Well, it kind of helps that I almost fucking died on the side of a mountain in Utah. But at, <laughs> but like the other day, I was just like, yo, I don't even give a fuck, dude. Like, I just want to go out there and just like, who gives a shit? Yo, if you're there, I'm good. It's weird because <laughs> yeah. it's like, yo, if I'm going through it with somebody else, it helps me so much. Right. Like if it's just me. Like if it was like, yo, peace, I'm going to an open mic tonight. I, I would, I would die in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they would have to stretch me out of there. That would be my set. Yeah. I, I think that now it's just kind of like, yo, fuck it. Like yeah. it's just one of those things. Yeah. It's just like anything else. Like it's, it would be like trying a new food. It's like, I've never had it before. So I'm kind of nervous to do it, but fuck it. I'm just going to try it and yeah. eat it. It's going to be one of those things where you're just like, yo, let's just fucking go out there and just whatever. If we suck, who cares? Yeah. And the thing, like the other thing with like music for me too, it's like, if I rolled out like a comedy album, like a part of me feels like, uh, like I don't want to be a joke artist. Right. You know, like I, I like, I want to do like, like you want to make serious music. Yeah. And I feel like people would just be I'm like, shocked. and then people would be like, yo, where the titty shit at? Yeah. 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 And then it's like, damn, where is the titty shit at? Yeah. And then like, I feel like I would fuck my own shit up. Well, if you ever wanted to take it seriously, then you wouldn't, you shouldn't do that. That's what I'm saying. But like, do I go to like, what would make me the most money? It would be like a titty mixtape. No, I think that, I think you do it and then you try to put out some serious, I think you do both. Yeah. And yeah. like, let people like say it, but it's like, whatever, bro. Like I can make this funny shit and I can make it like good too. And then it's also like, that's what little Dicky did. Yeah. yeah like he true. did a bunch of joke shit, but then eventually you're like, yo, this dude's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's a fucking, he's yeah. a big artist. So. Um. Uh, what is your most terrible memory? <sighs> wow, you know what's crazy? Hmm. Today's nine eleven. Yeah, that's probably mine. Yeah. Um, nine eleven was probably my worst memory because it was the first time I saw my dad cry. My dad was like my hero when I was younger, and he had just retired. Uh, three years prior so he was still very close with everyone who was in the, like the uh you know on the job and i remember when it was happening on 9-11 uh 
you know, everyone was getting called out of school and we were watching on the TV and just seeing people die on TV and just being like, yo, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. And then I remember just like trying to wake up. Cause you ever have that moment in dreams where you, you go like that with your eyes and then you wake yourself up sort of. Yeah. 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 So I kept trying to do that. Cause I'm in fourth fucking grade when this is yeah. happening. And, uh, that's right. You're, you were very young. I was really young. So we didn't know what was going on. Like I, I didn't even know what the world trade trade center was. I didn't know what a terrorist yeah. was. Like, I didn't know any of this shit. I don't know what hijacking means like nothing. So I'm like, what is going on? All I know is I'm seeing this building on fire in Manhattan. Everyone's freaking out. My mom is the most scared I've ever seen a woman Yeah. like in my life up to that point. And I don't know who my dad is. Like, I know my dad used to be a fireman, but like retired, like, does that mean he still has to go or like, like he still has the skill set? Yeah. Like, like did, did he go out. down there yeah. or like something? So I didn't know where the fuck he was. And then he eventually ended up showing, like coming home. And, and I just remember like the next morning him calling all these firehouses and finding out like all of these people he knew are dead now. Yeah. And it was like the it was worst. Horrible. It was terrible. Yeah. It was just heartbreaking to fucking like, it was, it was like a full, it wasn't even like a memory. It was like a full, like two days of it happening. And then the, the immediate just repercussions anguish. of like all these people yeah. are missing or these people are confirmed dead. And it's like, I didn't know any of them, but it was just like pulling people out of rocks and shit, bodies out of rocks. That shit yeah. Was it had such a effect on me that in fifth grade, like the following year, there was like an essay writing contest. And I, and I wrote an essay about, cause the question, you don't know what the question is. Like they ask you a question and then you have to write an essay on it oh, like on the spot. Okay. So it was, what is a hero? And I wrote this whole thing about one of my dad's friends. Cause he was telling me a bunch of stories about all these guys right. that had passed away. And there's this one, uh, particular guy. His name was, uh, Darrell Bronco was his nickname. Pearsall, I believe was his name. And he was telling me all this, this shit about him. So I wrote a whole essay about him and like about nine 11 and, you know, the fire department and the police department, all this shit. You won that shit. Cashed out. I Fuck know yeah, it. dude. Yeah. I mean, you can't not give nah, it to me nah, when I write that. Nah, nah, you when can't. a fifth grader writes about 9-11 a year after it happens, like, it was a shoe in I didn't know what I was doing at the time. <laughs> There's like a teardrop on the paper, too. Yeah. Like, he, he cried. Yeah, he cried look, right look at this. that. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably what my dad got fired from his job. Yeah. Because I think it, I think it, uh, it started a whole domino effect of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, just like him with like his own happiness and then like just us as a family unit. Um, cause he was like the, he was the provider. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, you know, cause like my dad used to bring me to work, like everybody loved him and shit. And then he got laid. He was a sports writer yeah. and then he got laid off. And then like, he didn't know how to do anything else. Right. You know? So, so that, that was, that was tough to see him like it be broken down like that. And have what he loved the most, like besides his family, be taken away from him. It was fucking tough. That's like that scene in Friday Night Lights. All I can do is play football. Yeah. Bobby Miles. Yeah. He fucks up his knee. Yep. It's fucking sad, man. Who's going to do that? I think he's All in jail. I know how to do football. I think he's in jail now. The real one? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Booby. Um, if you knew in one year that you would die suddenly, what would you change about the way you're living now? Whatever I could do to not fucking die in a year, probably. <laughs> I mean, you God can't. damn, eat a kale salad. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If I if I'm gonna die in a year, one year from today. Do you know? I borrow a whole bunch of money from you. I'll tell you that. Why the hell would I give it to you? No, I'm just be no. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would you like? Yeah. Would you like donate to like my go my one year GoFundMe? That's probably maybe what I would do. I'd be like, yo, I'm dying in a year. I need all the cash. I need all the cash I could do, and I would just like travel the world. I'd just go with you. Yeah, I would just travel the world. Yeah, man. And like, I would do a life's worth of things in a year. Because what else am I gonna do? I can't. I don't want to start a family. I don't want to have a baby. You know, like I, I might. I might want to. I would freeze some jizz, but like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because here's the thing, though, is like. I would freeze some jizz. No, because here's why. I, you can get pregnant by me later because right. I don't want you to be nine months pregnant in and the I'm last out, year of my life. And I'm in Croatia. I want, you, I want you to be there. Right. You know what I mean? And I would just have parties every night with people that I love and just like have like have different people make speeches every night. You know what I mean? And like have everybody there that just I like that speech idea. I'm bringing that to the retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everybody gives a speech. Uh, on different nights, you know, about just their life. It doesn't all have to be around me. Right. Yeah. You know, but like, 
and seeing like people really come out of their shells. That's what I would want to do for a year. I'd be like, all right, we're going to do the same thing in Monaco tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You just need the funds. Yeah, yeah. And I would just have this GoFundMe. And just people knew I was going to die in a year and just see how far I could go. That'd be tight. Yeah. Um, Like every day would just be a party, celebration of life. Yeah, I think the only thing I would change is that I would stop. Like, I don't, I don't know what I would do. I would probably just hire a person to be like, uh, like a videographer, and then just go do whatever the fuck I want. Oh yeah, I would videotape the whole fucking thing. Yeah, and just like let people watch it, and just like, yeah. hopefully, like that's like inspiration to to people. But it, you know, it's it's interesting this question because it's like, how would you live if you found out you were gonna die in a year? It's like, and everyone's like, yo, I do this and that, and then it begs the question, like, why don't you do that now? Of and course. I, I guess it is the money, but at yeah. the same time, you do have enough money to do some of that stuff. Yeah, and you don't. So that kind of makes me think, why, why not? And also when, if you want to do it, if you are are thinking like in a year I'll die and I want to do these things before I die, when are you going to do them? Why wouldn't you do them when you're young and able? Yeah. Why would you wait true. until you're 45 and you got to bring your three asshole children with you? Yeah. Who's not tying their shoes and fucking throwing up on the playing side Nintendo of the road. Switch the entire time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Put the fucking video games down there, yeah, Jacob. No, no like that, that's why, like, like, um, like we were talking about it. Like, you've never been to Europe. Yeah. Like, that's something you should do before, like, you have a family. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll be there. Like, I think you'll love Europe. Yeah. Uh, specifically Italy. Like I've been to Italy, Sweden, and Spain. Uh, you would like Spain a lot too, but uh, I think I'd, I'd I, like anything. <laughs> I think I think you should go. I think you'll learn a lot. Yeah, you know, there's something cool about like seeing motherfuckers not speak English. Yeah, being out of your element, being uncomfortable. Yeah, and it's like, yo, I'm gonna be uncomfortable every day I'm here, but it's okay. Being uncomfortable is, be you have like like. This Utah trip, I was completely out of my element. I had never done something like that before. Now, and, and almost dying is uncomforting, I would say. Yeah, but it was more so just like I went on this trip without knowing anything. Like I didn't know we were sleeping in the car and then yeah. and then doing a the hike in the morning, like all that shit. So, you know, and then and then you almost die, uh, and then you are in a town where like life is just different. There, yeah. It's a very small town. There's no beers that are over 3%, like 4%. Like yeah. everything's like whatever. And like people live a certain way. And it's like, it's, it's different. Yes. Everyone still speaks English and yes, this and that, but there's nothing really around. Oh, there's culture shock right here in America. You just got to, there was go a guy around it. the corner who had a Trump flag in his fucking front yard. And we we're like, Whoa, all right. Yeah. Like you don't see that. I mean, this is a blue ass state. So, yeah. and that's a red ass state. I believe it's 72% Republican. So yeah. it's like different in that aspect as well. But it's just like, you know, being, being uncomfortable. Like that was the only trip that on the flight back from Utah, I knew we were going to New York, but a part of me was like, if we were going to a different place that wasn't my home and we had to do this, like not hiking, but be on the road still, like I'd be okay with that. Yeah. You know, because I'm just like, I don't know. I think that I'm, and I was never this person. Like I, I'm always very comfortable at home and I'm always like, whatever, but I, I love being on the move now. I love going out to eat. I love like going to restaurants, trying new things. And Fuck like, yeah. I'm just, I, I've completely done a 180 as far as that goes. I think like, Putting just putting yourself in those situations, like, like when I went to Sweden, I was like, I'm just gonna go. Yeah, you know, like I could have found a reason not to go, but I was it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go, and I, stuff it up. Yeah, and I was just really happy that I went. Yeah, the hardest part is just getting there. That's that's the most annoying thing. You know the Utah thing. Remember you asked me on the last show, like, is there anything you like learned? Yeah, and like I. Th and I said, like, I think I just learned, like, how thirsty I can be. Yeah. Like, I never thought I could be that thirsty in my life. Uh, but I think that what that kind of symbolizes is, like, how far you can, how uncomfortable you can be and still be all right. Right. You know, like, I was across the country in a state I've never been to. No one around. No cell service. No water. Horrible health insurance. Uh, awful <laughs> health insurance. <laughs> Like terrible health insurance, like all like in all these things stacked against it, and I was all right, and yeah. I had a good time. And you, yeah, you know, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yo, you just be uncomfortable. Like I was uncomfortable for so long, like 
you know, sitting there and like whatever. And then I had the rest of the vacation to do yeah. shit too. I had to do other stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like the whole vacation was like high anxiety. Like not that I actually had anxiety, but it was right. just like, I'm, oh, I'm no, high alert. It. I'm on high alert of being like, yeah. you know, this is not something I'm used to. And like, just, just that as itself, you learn like, it's a challenge. Yeah. So you learn, you could, you could, you could push that, yourself. It's a challenge that you weren't prepped for. Right. So to be able to react that way is almost like a badge of honor in a way. It's like, yo, I made it. Yeah. And when they say like, you know how it's like, a proving point to yourself with shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women are like, oh, pain is beauty or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But pain is also like growth. Like when you when you are like uncomfortable and like you're it's painful, uh, you you learn a lot and yeah. you like get to experience a lot. Like of shit. how we were making fun of that smiley guy, with the 30 year old cat. And, uh, you know. What? The guy we were talking about making fun of the hypothetical guy that's like never felt anything bad happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you know, he's not doing much growing. Exactly. Yeah. He just knows what he knows, and yeah. he's happy with that. Like whatever. All right. Uh, what roles do love and affection play in your life? Uh, huge ones. Yeah. Um, if I'm not like hugged or or loved by something throughout the day, I I'm a mess. Yeah. Yeah. Like I need to be loved. Yeah. I need to, I need to have someone be affectionate about me. That's yeah. why, you know, like even when my fiance is mad at me, I still got my dog. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got it. No, no, no. <laughs> there's a couple other medical reasons why, but it's something about having that, and we share it with other species too. It's just something scientific about it that just puts me in the right place. Yeah, like my whole body's fucked up. If like I don't have love and affection th at, at some point during the day, and that's not even including sex, yeah. you know, like sex is a plus. Don't get me wrong, sex is fantastic. It's but just being able to like hold somebody and like love somebody, yeah, and you know they love you back. That's I I can't I can't go without it. Yeah, especially when you live in a city where everyone just walks by you. Yeah, and and I become, no one says hi to you. I've become one of those people too, though. It's like I used to be someone that cared about everybody I saw on the street. Now it's like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, because I mean, coming from a small town, it's like you you you'll see these people again. Like you'll never see these people in New York. So you're like, there's no point in saying no. Hi. There's no point in talking to them. And it's and it's weird too. It's like when you grow up in a small town, like somebody say struggling, right? Like you want to help. You help them, you know. But it's like I can help a guy out here. I'll never see him again. And I'm like the guy, I don't know who I'm helping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's different. Yeah, I think love and affection is like the the only the only thing that keeps me like moving is you know like i said i mean i i bring up my friends and family all the time like i'm extremely blessed when it comes to that shit of course and like that's love and affection like down to its core and i wouldn't be able to survive without that like no. if, I, if i had to move if they all suddenly like, fell off the face of the earth like i would give myself a month before yeah. i would i don't know what would happen yeah. i wouldn't be this guy no, I wouldn't like I'd be a different mind. yeah I'd lose my mind i would be a different person you'd probably be an asshole too you'd yeah. be like ebenezer scrooge yeah up here some, all, some ghosts would have to visit yeah up here with all your money <laughs> your ivory tower <laughs> with all your money with all your money in your ivory tower no but that's what i'm saying it's like it's something so awesome it's like yo like i always told you like my dad used to never say he loved me yeah and like i got him to start saying it <laughs> and like it started out as a joke but then it got real then i was like yo does this motherfucker not love me dude <laughs> you know i started thinking that and then, like, it, I, it got deeper, like, deeper rooted because, like, his dad never said he loved him. Well, it's just like, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like, old, Keith doesn't it's, tell it's me he old, loves It's me. an old Paisan thing. It's, it's yeah. Some people are just old school like that and they don't feel comfortable yeah, saying Yeah, it's like, wait, were you a chick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, you know, but, like, now he says it to me all the time. Yeah. And I didn't know how much I needed that. You know what I mean? A reminder. A reminder that your parents love you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it goes a long way. Like, yo, when I have a kid, I'm going to tell that shit I love him all the time. Or her. You know what I mean? Like, that's just... tell that shit? I'm going to be like, yo, you little fuck, I love you. You bitch. You f pain in the fucking ass. Yeah, stop shitting yourself. But I love you. Yeah. You know? It's a lot. It means a lot. I think that it, he, every human at some point goes through a point where they're not getting that. Yeah. And I think those are their lowest points. Yeah, of course. For the most part. Yeah. Unless you're a fucking sociopath. Yeah. Um, <coughs> how do you how do you feel about your relationship with your mother? This is great. Uh me and my relationship <laughs> with my mother has gotten a lot better. Uh -huh. Um 
we went through a weird phase because when I moved out, when our apartment b- burned down, um, they, my mom and dad moved in there. And Into a burnt down place. No, no, no. They fixed it up. <laughs> okay. They stayed, they stayed with my sister and my brother-in-law upstate. And then when they came back, they were like, listen, we're moving in, but you guys can't mm-hmm. live here anymore. Okay. So I took it as, wow. Fuck y'all. Yeah. And then she had the audacity to call and ask me to help them move in. Uh huh. So I was like, no. I said, you guys turn your back. Uh oh. Who's that? I don't know. Oh, delivery guy. But I was like, I don't know. But I was like, you guys did that. And. I was like, I don't want any part of you guys. Damn. Yeah. But then you realize as you get older, it's, you know. Dumbass. Yeah, yeah. You're being dumb. You're being selfish. But my thing was, it's like, like, I was like, yo, you motherfuckers, like, set this fire. Just so I would get out of here. Like, you guys went to, like, a fucking high fucking further extent than I thought you would. But (laughs) we rebuilt, we rebuilt our, uh, relationship a lot since that because i went to her i was like listen i'm sorry i acted like that and yeah, yeah. That. you know what i mean i was like you know but my mom plays favorites she knows it and uh mike's her favorite yeah so like mike moved in there like after so i was just like i was on my own you know for the most part so like i we always bust my mom shit about that yeah you know what i mean but um we, our relationship has gotten so much better. We're in a really good place now. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the relationship with my mom. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah, like, I think people, like, it's obvious that, I, like, I'm yeah. a giant mama's boy. Uh, love my mom. Never. You never had a bad patch with your mom. Never. Yeah, never that's, that's you're, you're it, lucky. The thing is, with my mom, I've never, like, I don't, like, go to her with everything. You know, it's, yeah. it's like, it's not like we have a relationship like that. Like people have a really close relationship with parents where they, they talk about everything and they, they, whatever. I'm not necessarily necessarily with like my mom with that. No, my mom was just a great mom, man. Like yeah. she, you know, and my dad, like we were all so close to my mom because when there's four of us and we were all children and my mom didn't work and she raised us because my dad worked two jobs yeah. so that. Like he was a fireman and then he had, he did construction as well so that my mom could do that. Cause they were like, cause you know, my dad was like, I don't want some fucking nanny like raising our kids. Like I want you to raise our kids right. and like whatever. So Queens. Yeah. And he, uh, so she, so we were all really close. Like she, she did everything for us, you know, like, yeah. and, and we were a fucking maniacs dude. Like, yeah. You know, you think it's bad now. Like when we were younger, it was just ma- fucking mayhem. Over yeah. There. That's your ace though. Yeah. And, yeah. and my mom has just always just been great, man. Like she's the fucking greatest. And like she, I don't know, like the like. People say it, like, oh man, my mom's the greatest, like whatever, like, you know, blah blah blah. But I really, truly, like, fucking believe that shit, cause like, she, she can adjust to any like anything. Like she's fucking like brave in certain situations when oh, you're yeah. scared and shit. Like, and I'm fully confident that she could do anything. Like I, I, I really feel like on that on that Utah trip, like if she came, like she would have been good. Like, right. she, and she's 60, whatever the fuck she is. And like, she's just that kind of person. Like, she's just a fucking tough. Duck. Yeah, yeah she's, she's tough. Just, she's just tough and she's super loving. Like, battle hardened. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's just like, she's just a fucking thug, man. Yeah. Like, she, nothing gets to her. That's your backbone, though. Yeah. Yeah. I've ne- and I've never seen, and the biggest thing that I've learned from like both my parents, but it's like even more shocking when it comes from your mother, is that like, She's never felt sorry for herself ever. And there's yeah. been a lot of shit that's happened to her. I'm and, sure. And there's never been a time where it's like, woe is me or like whatever. You know what I mean? And and I think and I thank God because like I would hate to be that and I hate people who are like that. Right. So f- to get that from my mom is like you know that's like the greatest thing i could ask for because yeah. uh, my dad is like that my dad is like fucking you know maybe too much like that yeah, yeah. where he's just like yeah what I, like he'll figure anything out like to, whatever to his own detriment probably yeah you know, but yeah. yeah my dad could thinks he could punch an asteroid to bits probably yeah. <laughs> like he, he thinks he's confident to do anything like, like a blown up foot he's like yeah just put some air on it yeah i don't know whatever it's fine. 
Um, but yeah, I think I think that's what it is. Like my mom, we have a great relationship. We've always had a great relationship. I would fucking do anything for her. If I swear to God, and I've said this numerous times, if my mom actually came to me and she's like, I need every dollar that you have, I would start with zero. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Without question. Without question, I would. I mean, I would ask my mom why. I would. I probably even would. See, that's, that's, the, that's the difference. I'd be like, where are you going? Yeah. Where are you going? No, but my and my mom would never, ever ask, ask me for that. She would never like, you know, whatever. And I just like, you know, I just feel like I still owe her everything. And yeah, like, I, I want to like get her more shit and just like do whatever. And, uh, but like I said, if she asked me like, yo, I need all of your money. I, I would start with zero dollars and fucking figure it out. And that's also because I'm so confident in myself, but I got that also from her. Right. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. That's great. From both my parents. Yeah. Um, all right. What else do we have here? All right. Um, share an embarrassing moment in your life. Um, I have one. I think like, I may have like a funny about embarrassing it. one or like a real, like a bad one. No, just whatever. An embarrassing moment. Whatever one pops into your head. Mine's kind of funny. I enjoyed being embarrassed though. Um, trying to think. I'll tell mine. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I may have told this story before on the podcast, but I, I was out at a bar, um, after I had a meeting. Oh, I think this was actually around the time with the household, that whole house thing. So I was leaving with my financial advisor, and he's like a lifelong friend. Yeah. Uh, of my oldest brothers, so I've known him. Like they went to high school together. Um, but we went out for drinks with, uh, Keith and I think Greg was there. Yeah. Greg was there too. So there was a karaoke. So we started singing a bunch of songs and like, I'm no stranger to karaoke. Like I'm out there belting them the yeah, fuck out. And like, there's one, there's, it's not a packed bar. So I'm singing most of the songs that are being played. Right. And one of them, like, as I start to get more drunk, I'm like, yo, put on Bruce Springsteen, Santa Claus is coming to town. It's March. Yeah. So I start singing that song and some guy just comes out of nowhere and takes the mic out of my hand and he just go and no he like starts walking over to me and he goes all right all right all right he takes the mic out of my hand and it's like no 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 and I thought he worked there he didn't he was just some dude in the bar you just in had front it, of just everyone had enough. yeah because like I guess like everyone was kind of like the fuck are we doing here yeah so he was the one who was like all right I'm gonna put an end to this shit. You know, because it's a long song, and I was just singing "Santa Claus is Coming to Town," and it's Bruce Springsteen too, who could be annoying. Yeah, so he just took Santa the mic. Santa Claus is He just took to the town. mic out of my hand, and I just had to stand there and be like, "Yeah, this guy fucking took that mic." Damn. And also, which made it even worse, there was someone who came up to me beforehand that before that happened, who knew who I was. Ah. So they get to, they saw me just like get shitted on, which was hilarious. Yeah, that sucks. But that I sucks. enjoy that because it's like it's great. I like it. Um. I'm going to go. I was by myself. But um, the most embarrassing moment ever was probably when well, my brother, my brother was in a was in a a facility at one point. Um, and I went to visit him with my dad. And um, my, I'm talking to my brother, Mike, and he's like, yo, like, uh, can you go outside to the ashtray? And get me like, like busted down cigarettes, because mm -hmm. they could sell them in there, right? You know what I'm saying? He wasn't in jail, by the way, but he was just like, "Yo," he was like, "Can you get them?" You know what I mean? He was just going through some stuff, so he was like, "All right, so can you get them for me?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll get them for you. I'll get them for you." So I went outside and got them, and I got caught in front of my dad, and in front of this like all these people, so. My dad was like, oh, listen, you know, I'm sorry. He's just trying to help out his brother. Like, I'm sorry about that. And, like, you know, it was embarrassing. We get in the car and drive home. As soon as we got to one red light, my dad hit me so hard <laughs> that, yo, this was the hardest my dad ever hit me. And it felt like, yo, he hit me for real. Like, he hit me fucking hard. And everything was like. I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. He's like, he's like, that's, uh, he's like, you've, you've, that was the most embarrassed you've ever made me in my life. <laughs> so him saying that I embarrassed him and made me feel embarrassed. All right. So that's w the one that sticks out the most. All right. And then like the funny one was one, the one I told on here is there, there was an assembly. Yeah. And these people were like Moroccan fucking, uh, uh, instruments up there. Like who wants to come up? And like, I was known as being an asshole anyway. Everyone jazzed me up. I was like, I'm coming. 
And I ran down and I fucking fell running to the stage. <laughs> And then everyone fucking laughed at me. Fuck you guys. Did you go to the stage or you went back to your seat? Oh, I went to the stage. Nice. You can't turn around. No, no, you can't. I got up there and started shaking that thing. I was in pain, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my dad hitting me that time was pretty embarrassing. All right, next. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? Um, With me? <sighs> what do you got? Like Sandy Hook, maybe. I mean, there's so much potential there for jokes. But I know. But, like, it, for me, like, I don't really have any limits, dude. Like I said, like, I want to eat, eat dinner with Trey Parker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, nothing's really off limits for me, to be honest, if it's done tastefully. Yeah, I don't... I, 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 I'm not one of those I don't think people, anything. I don't, I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, yo, see, yo. Yeah, yeah. You know? I don't think anything's too serious to, to joke about. No. You know, I I think that if it's funny, it's funny. If it made me laugh, it made me laugh, man. Yeah. And but sometimes like, when it's a when it's a like, there's a difference because, for instance, I saw Bob Saget like do a stand up once, and yeah. he was and he does a lot of shock value like comedy, and a lot of it I just felt like okay, this is only for the purpose of being shock value. Super like it's, reach. it's not like yeah. funny. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like gross or like oh god, you know, like that stuff I don't enjoy. But if it's a joke about something, even if it was like oh my grandpa died or something, right? Right. And someone made a joke about about it, but it was funny. Right. I'd be like, I I would laugh. It's funny. So like, if someone's like, "Yo, my grandpa died," and I was like, "Good for him." Yeah. I might chuckle if I heard somebody say that. Yeah. You know, I, that's just how I, I I am. Dark comedy is funny to me. You know what I mean? But like, like it, like if we were, but if you, if, if we you, were supposed, if to... someone in your family just died, right? Who was like young? Yeah. Like so but, you, say you had but, a say you had a fourteen year old younger brother because I don't want to even talk about any real family dying right say you had a fourteen year old younger brother and he yeah. got hit by a car right right and I was just like damn I was like skate or die right <laughs> <laughs> skate or die. I guess he died you know yo you're gonna be like yo what happens when you don't skate yeah <laughs> you're gonna be like yo what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, there's a time and place for that, but there yeah. would be a time where that would be hilarious to me. Yes. If you said like, you <laughs> know. If we were just driving and be like, yo, man, this is where uh, Jacob died, remember? Be like, yeah, man, skate or die. <laughs> Guess he didn't skate that I day. Could, I could never build up the balls to say that. but No, but I see something like that. I think it's funny. Yeah. But like. It, it, I it, don't have limits like that. It would be like if my grandparents, they used to live in Maine and we had a plan to go there and visit them. Yeah. But they ended up dying. And then, like, a week after I told you that, like, after, like, I mean, whatever, blah, 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 it's kind of like we're dealing with it. And you were just like, yeah, I guess we're not going to Maine. Like, I would find that hysterical, yeah. you know? Like, that's funny. Jeez. And like, died next week. Yeah. You know? <laughs> couldn't, really couldn't wait it off. Jesus. Huh? <laughs> Drove all the way up here just to see that they're dead? God damn it. <laughs> see, like, stuff like that to yeah, me is yeah. funny. Like, as long as it's done tastefully, like you said. Like, if it's, if it's just, like, an obvious, like, you're just trying to be offensive, like, I don't enjoy that kind of comedy. Yeah, like, listen, like, that's that's the perfect way to put it. Yeah, I don't enjoy that. Kind if you're of going out of your way to be offensive with like no like, if you're being playfully funny and like you I, like joke about anything, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, because I would be a hypocrite to think I've made fun of everything. <sighs> What's I might, up? I might actually save that one. All right, save it. You know, yeah. no, no, no. There's only two left. They both have to do with death. <laughs> right. Oh my, no, three, right three, up, three, three, right three. Right up my alley. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna save that one for last because that's the best one that we'll end on. Okay. Okay, your house containing everything you own catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make a final dash to save any one item. What would it be and why? I have my answer for this. And I said it when I did this with Greg, and it's the truth. All my loved ones are out. All your pets are out, too. All my That's what I was going to say. Loved ones like, and pets are out. Fuck, throw Eli, just catch him. Yeah. Um... You can safely go in and get something. What are you getting? This. Your Rolex? Yeah, this. One thing. Or uh, photo albums. Fo photo albums? Family photo albums. Okay. Like like of pictures that like we don't have, like of like my parents like when they were young. But most likely I'm grabbing this or my wallet because I don't want to go to the fucking DMV. Because <laughs> I don't want to go to the fucking DMV. My answer is absolutely nothing. It wouldn't even occur to me to go in. Let it all burn. Really? I have no attachment to anything in here. Nothing. It could all go. 
I have no attachment, any sentimental value to anything in here. That's kind of sad. It's not sad. To I me. Th- I think it's I think it's great because I don't There's think nothing it like matters. your mom ever gave you that you loved or something? No. All the stuff in my garage <laughs> that my mom like you have she, it. she keeps it's, it's over well, there. she keeps it in there, but it's like I don't I don't care. Like I don't I I don't mind not having it. I get why she wants it. Yeah. This is her children's stuff. I don't want it. I don't have any sentimental value in maybe any materialistic item ever. Wow. Nothing. That's There's crazy. nothing I carry or carry around for like, oh, this is like my good luck charm or, you know, this really means a lot to me. I have nothing. I have none of that. And it's not because that, and I don't see it as being a sad thing. I really just think I hold value in things that are like more real. Like if any of these cameras broke right now, I wouldn't give a fuck. No, no. Like everything's no. replaceable. What in here? What could I possibly have? But you can save one thing, though. Yeah, but I wouldn't like. You just wouldn't partake. I wouldn't even know what to do. Right. Like I, I don't know there's where not I would one, go. Th- there's not one thing that sticks out. Absolutely not. Everything is just a thing to me. Like it, it would be like saving one of the forks. Yeah. Now I think about it, I might need my medicine. The only thing, yeah, I mean, we're not gonna count that. Yeah. Like <laughs> the only, th- the on- the th- one thing that I might do yeah. is grab like. A laptop and only because it's like expensive right and it'd be like oh i get to save a little money here right right but like I, if it burns like whatever yeah like i have not i have no whatever that's why like even my car like people keep people like really keep their cars clean and they really care about it. i'm just like yeah if it gets a scratch on the bumper i'm not like oh my I'm like, oh, i can't even see it yeah <laughs> so, yeah yeah no you're right like there's nothing i would really go back for yeah i'm getting this watch though yeah i get the watch yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You keep your no fucking saving ass across the street. I'm running in there. All right, the last two are fucking fucked. Of all the people in your family, whose death would you find the most disturbing? Wow. Jesus, we didn't even ease into that. No. Say that again? Of all the people in your family, whose death would you find the most disturbing? Jesus. And you got like 15 people to choose from over there. It's a big old Spanish family. My brother, Mike. Yeah. My brother, Mike, because I don't think he's reached his potential yet. Yeah. And, um, I've never met somebody more caring. And, uh, Mike taught me a lot about life. Uh Mike taught me when to be loving, when to be caring, when he taught me when to be selfish. Uh huh. Um, he taught me how to mature. He he made mistakes so I could learn from them in a way. Right. And I feel like me and him slept in the same room until we were like 23 years old. God damn it. <laughs> He's alive, dude. I know, but I, I'm just, I don't want to think about it, but I'm saying it. I don't think I would ever be the same if he, if he were to die. Right. I would never be the same. Yeah. Um. Because I think of like my other brothers and sisters, it's like my sister has her kids. Like she has like a legacy kind of. Yeah. She has children. You know, Jared has children. Like he has a namesake. You know what I mean? It's like my brother is just my brother. You know what I mean? And and he's on his own. And like, but we were the team before that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we were, we, we were, we were the squad and that would, that would kill me. That would that would destroy me as a person. Yeah. I would I would never recover from that ever. I I feel the same way about Keith, and that's the that's that's my answer. It's, it's so Keith. It's I think it's not about, even close. I think about it all the time. Like it's not even close. Yo, me and Keith hung out every single day of my life until I moved out. Yeah, like every day. That's your best friend. That's my best friend. That's yeah. my guy. Yeah. And like when I had no money and this kid had money, he would pay for me like without even thinking. He yeah. would never ask me for anything. He never asked me to repay him ever. Like we would go out and he would literally buy me everything. Yeah. Like, cause he had a job and he was like older than me and I didn't have a job and I didn't try to get a job either, but he had one and he had money and he, even if he didn't have money, yeah. he would find a way to, to pay for me. And he's just like the fucking greatest guy in the world. And the other thing too is like, uh, I wouldn't just to, just so everyone knows if that were to ever happen, if Keith were to pass away, goodbye to all of this. Yeah. There's no way yeah. I come back from that. No, that's when I make my escape and I go live in the mountains and no one sees me again yeah. and like, everything gets deleted and it's gone. And it's like, uh, Mike also used to never let anybody fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, he would kill people for me. Yeah, Mike's a psycho. Like, uh, he he would like if anyone's gonna beat my brother up, it's gonna be me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like kind of how he was. And he would beat you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he would. And uh, that dude's born in a different era, bro. Like, he's like. He he should have been born like on a back of a horse, like with a fucking sword. <laughs> like that's just the type of dude he is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to get back from that one. Yeah, no, that'd be rough. Yeah. All right, the last one. Uh, if you were to die this evening, mm-hmm. with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone, and why haven't you told them yet? That's a really good question. That's the last question. Can you say that one more time just so I fully understand it? If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? And why haven't you told them yet? Um, do you know your answer? I have an answer that I believe I said on the show I did with Greg, but I don't want to repeat it on Basement Yard. Okay. Because it also may not be true anymore. Okay. Because I may have told them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you don't got to tell everything. No, but I'm saying it's it's just not it's not true anymore. You're right. Like I told them. <laughs> um. Damn, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really I don't really know about that one. In terms of that. I've done I've done so much closet cleaning, like when I went through all my shit. Yeah, yeah, you, you, did. you know what I mean. So like, like I talked to everybody. Like I've like I've gone to like the, yeah, ap- yeah. the apology phase. You yeah. know what I mean. But uh, I think now, honestly, I would I would I would apologize to myself and say what and just be like, you could have done a lot more. I think I think I think right now, even right now, where I'm at. I'm an, I'm an underachiever. So you said you, but you haven't told yourself that? Not to that point. It hasn't got to the point where it's been that serious. I have, but I've pushed through that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. if it came down to me fucking dying. Yeah. And I had to reflect, I would apologize to myself for being lucky enough to live on this earth and not doing everything I think I could have done. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. In terms of like things I know I could have done. Uh-huh. That's probably where I would go. I don't know if I have like an answer for this anymore. Like my answer was very obvious at the time, but yeah. I know that I like changed it because yeah. I like went out of my way to like tell them after I did this right. exercise. Yeah. Uh, but I think now it would kind of just be, I guess I would regret telling everyone I know, like exactly what they mean to me. And which is a weird thing because you never really tell anyone that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like you hold that information back, but you know there's people in your life that mean a lot to you. Yeah, that for maybe sure. they have no idea. For sure. Or they have no idea of like how much they mean. Yeah. Or what they've done for you. Oh, or yeah. how they inspire you and motivate you or whatever. I guess I would regret not doing that and letting people know. Because it's a good thing, like to me, when when people let me know and they're like you know, I just want to let you know, like, it means a lot, like, you know, whatever you are, you motivated me or like, you know, you, I care about, like, you know, whatever, that feels good to know. Yeah. But for me to reciprocate that to all the people that I think are like that, like, I would regret not doing that. See, I do that all the time. Like, like, uh, I'm a very thankful person, like for where I'm at. So like, I, but I, another thing is though, is like, I like to know where I stand with people, you know? That I care about their opinions. Right. Like, I want to know where I stand somewhat in, you know, in their eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, but that that's a good one, too. Not Because yeah. there are some people out there. Excuse me. Bourbon. There are some people out there that like, it's like, yo, I love this dude, but I don't know why I haven't texted him. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one, too. Yeah, that's the end of that. Yeah. How long was that? Oh, we got a God damn hour 40. Wow. Did it to him. Did it to him. Got serious there. Yeah. We almost got Danny there. Yeah, no, no. I was close a couple times. I can't be crying on camera, though. I'll be honest with you. Like, all this shit. The woman might got me close, but thank God you made a joke. Yeah. 
Because if you didn't, uh, yeah, I was there. It would it would have been bad. Man, I'm here to save you, bro. Don't yeah, worry about you it. You saw it. Yeah, I started know like coming. doing this one. Like, it's like ah. Uh, you were like, yo, if whatever. anything happened to Keith, like this is all done. I was like, oh my god, he made something funny. Thank God, Jesus. <laughs> Once Danny starts doing this. Oh, I'm like, crying. I'm like, oh, man. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Danny's like an old dog. Like, once yeah. you start smacking his lips, you're like, what are you, thirsty? I was yeah, like, he's crying. Um, but I think everyone should cry, though. Like, at least once a month. Yeah. There's nothing. You know, it's a cry. Happy cry. Oh. I cried in Utah of happiness. Yeah. Well, I didn't, like, full-on cry, but I was definitely teared up. I think it's. I think it's one of the most healthy things you could do. Now, if you're crying all the time, it's not healthy. Yeah, chill out. But, like, if you're crying because it's like, yo, I, there's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. And one tear no, comes no, in. No, 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 no. Love that song. Uh, and you start crying a little bit. I think that shows you're in touch with yourself. I think that's what humans are supposed to do. Yeah. You know? Because I, I really do think, like, it's like, all right, I don't mean to get too crazy out there or make this show run any longer than it has to, but animals right dogs when they die they accept they're gonna die right yeah and, and they just they go throughout that i think as humans we're blessed to like try to have a way around that you know what i'm saying so that's why it's like it's what i mean what i'm trying to say is is like dogs have emotions too but mostly they live off their the science of their of their uh breed or whatever I'm trying to make this make sense. Okay. But like they live off the science of their breed. Like they know when they're going to die and like, like that's it. You know what I mean? Us, like we have all these things like medicine and all these other things to try and get back to like being so and so like happy and like having a fulfilled life. But I think like you said, like just a part of life is just like a part of life is just shit. Yeah, of course. You know, I think like you have to, you have to live in some shit. I think that's the, I think that's one of the most beautiful parts of being a human being. For the most part Yeah it's kind of and like And we can express our shit Dogs can't Yeah You know They can go like mm, But they're just like Oh he's crying You know like A dog can get depressed Yeah A dog can be anxious A dog can have all those feelings But they can't express themselves What I was trying to say Is our ability as human beings To express ourselves Just like how we did in this test Yeah Which makes us otherworldly Almost godlike Amongst everything else on this planet Right So it's like being able to have that and be just be able to go some shitty times, I think that makes people who they are, really. Yeah, I think it's important. I think that's like... As, as do good times as well, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, this is probably a bad like comparison, but it, with weather, right? <laughs> I love when we make comparisons. Uh, this one's better than my dog when I'm going to be upset. No, I'm just saying, like, with weather, uh, if, if you lived in a place that was only hot 24 7 mm. you wouldn't really like like with new york people complain about new york weather all the time where it's like oh in the cold in the winter it's like you hate it like blah 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 but yeah. it's like i like the change because it's like you get bad weather or you get, and then you get good weather and then you get bad weather you get good weather it's the same thing with like let me adapt you have a chance to adapt right and and it's it's like you, you miss either way like you you miss the other thing either right. way you know what i mean like when, when it's freezing you're like dude i cannot fucking wait for summer and then after a while when it's like 90 degrees for five days in a row you're like yeah i, I just want to put a hoodie on right yes now. yes you know what i'm saying yes. so i mean it's it's just good man you, you you learn a lot when you go through like bullshit and and uh you know so i mean i guess what i'm trying to say is that if you if you're going through bullshit it's a good thing in a way i just think that people have to really understand like life life is shit because it's it, not shit. no 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 no. But what what I mean by shit is not terrible. It's just that there's a lot of variables that are going to be stress inducing. Some are self created. Some are just they happen organically. So like it's just your life's going to be full of shit. It's, it's like, just how you how you deal with it. It's like Forrest Gump. Life's like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's some shit in that yeah. box. That's what I'm saying. But That's some of them saying. some of them are good. Though. Yeah. And you know, but some of them suck. Yeah, that's what the real quote. That's is. that's what I'm trying to. That say. was the first draft of the script, and then they redrafted it to you never know what you're gonna get. Yeah, but what that means they didn't is use like, our copy. Yeah, our yeah. copy was like, oh, there's the gross coconut ones. <laughs> I'm enjoying. Life's like a box of chocolates. There's the gross coconut ones. <laughs> I think that's great. I, that, that's what they should have fucking said. It. Oh yeah. Um, 
It's all shit. It's all shit. <laughs> We're all going through shit. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I think that, like, you know, I feel like I've been through uh, a lot of stuff, and I'm very, like, I'm in my head, and I think about these things, like, all the way through to the point where now, like, when shit goes wrong and when shit fails and, like, doesn't go the way that I want it to, like, I get, I get excited about that. Yeah. Like, I think it there teaches was a you thing. how to handle things. Yeah, but, like, now I look forward to that because I think that the only way to do that is, like, yo, are you either going to give up on that, which I'm just not that fucking person ever. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, that all that means is, like, what I've done and that I thought was good enough, and someone goes, nope. And you can either give up on that or you have to get better than what you thought the best was. So I'm, if I'm getting better, I'm happy. Dude. That's the crazy thing, though, is that it could happen like that. Yeah, and it just happened to me. There was a thing. I'm not going to say what it was, but uh, you know, there was this thing that I worked on for a very long time. And yeah. then, I, and then uh, everyone's going to think it's the script. It wasn't. Uh, but <laughs> there was this thing that I worked on for a very long time. And then I was very happy with it, very content, and like very being like, this is like a good piece of work that I... And then it just got shot completely down. Shit. And it was like you know shocking because there's so many factors leading up to that and like so many people saying yes yes, yes, yes and then it got completely shot down like and that, yeah. i was sad for maybe 25 seconds and then i was like well now all this means is that i have to create because i'm going to do this yeah like it's going to happen right but now it just has to be better than what i already thought was the best i could do but no clearly i did not go to my full potential so i have to get better than that that's how i think right. i never go Oh man, I feel sorry for myself, and like, let's just throw some trash. To pack it in. I'm not good at this, or I'm not gonna like. I'm never like that. Like, I'm gonna. It's gonna get done, yeah. dude. Like, it's happening. So you just have to get. Eventually, you get through that shit. Yeah, you have to. And you that's have the, to. That's the formula. That's the formula. <laughs> everyone's going through it. Everyone. Everyone's. Hey, going, it's all shit. <laughs> it's all shit. <laughs> if that didn't get demonetized immediately, I'd make that the title. But ah, but I mean, it's all shit. Anyway, Danny, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Danny LaPriori on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Validate my my existence. Guys, and go check out the Stank Podcast with Danny and, and Frank. Yes. It uh, comes out on every Friday uh, on YouTube uh, and fucking... Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts and, and shit. And all that shit. Yeah, and all that shit. Spotify, all that it's shit. It's all shit. It's all shit. Uh, go check out Other People's Lives, the other podcast I do with Greg where this idea was kind of born. Um that comes out every Thursday, but it, we come back on September 20 something. The last Thursday in September is when we're premiering the new season. Uh, so go check that out. Go subscribe on uh, iTunes or whatever the fuck. For sure. For sure. For sure. And uh, yeah, our Instagram is at the basement yard and go check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash the basement yard. We appreciate everyone who is, uh, you know, supporting the show on a, you know, month to month basis. You just fart? No, no, no. I cracked my back. Oh, I thought you farted. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, that is all. See you guys next time. <laughs>